Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is the latest tutorial for Armature 9 featuring the 2016.1 version of the Armature. And this year we're doing something new. We're offering it in an additional material. It's made out of a now a wood composite. So it has this beautiful brown color that really reflects light very nicely. But we're doing things slightly differently with videos this time around rather than doing one long video where I try to cram in all the different features like the inverse kinematic arms and the upcoming inverse kinematic legs. Tutorials on how to tighten your joints so you can essentially keep your armature well fitted forever. The, there's one devoted entirely to the articulated hand. So all these, thing, all these videos are going to be available as separate shorter videos that you can find in our Kits and Bits page. Simply click on any product that you want to learn more about, like the universal peanut joint, for example, and accompanied with that product, you will see a video. And uh, it should be a short five minute video that just goes over that particular part if you want to dive deeper and learn more about some of the different features in the armature. There's also a help and support page up at the top, and there are some other videos there to address some frequently asked questions by customers. So for this video, what I want to do is just focus on posing and the basic points of articulation of the armature, starting with the head and the neck. And uh, I'm using the new wood composite material version of the armature for this demonstration. And uh, I'm just going to work my way down from the top. So the head and neck is really cool. It has this sort of double jointed design. It has a big ball joint at the base, which allows you to tilt the neck forward and back. You can spin it around 360 degrees, tilt it left and right. And the additional joint at the base of the skull allows you to create additional rotation to the head so you can get really organic and natural looking head and neck postures that really haven't been possible on any artist mannequin until Armature 9 came around. The cla default clavicles allow you to move the shoulders up and down. There is a more advanced clavicle that you can buy on our Kits and Bits page that allows the shoulders to move forward and back, and you can get that as an add-on. And this interesting sort of shoulder design allows you to move the arms straight up, but you can also move them straight up and around, so you can extend the range of motion even further. So for example, you could flip that over and across the clavicle to create crossed arm poses, you know, like the one I'm featuring here. This is something that no artist mannequin has really been able to do uh, well at all to this, to the extent that Armature 9 can. Uh, one of the other things that you could do to take advantage of that kind of clever design is you can flip the arms up again and around like I'm showing there and have the arm fling itself across behind uh, the head. Um, this is a little extreme what I'm doing here, but it just kind of helps communicate the extent to which you can get those arms pretty much anywhere uh, you want if you're patient and you kind of uh, learn how, how to manipulate that ball joint. The H-shaped joint has two points of articulation. It's responsible for placement of the forearm essentially, so you can flex and extend the forearm, but also spin it around so that you can reorient it. All of these pieces are pressure fitted. And so the idea behind that was to allow customers to take the pieces apart, tighten them if they have to, but also attach different versions of different pieces that we have available in the Kits and Bits page so that you could create, you know, your own creatures, your own custom designs, essentially. And uh, last year, we even launched a customization service so that customers could request specific leg and arm length through armaturelab.com. The uh, new hand uh, wrist uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a ball joint, so it spins across. Um, it can flex and extend. And because of you know all these different features on the arm, you can get those hands anywhere you want them to. The universal peanut joint that connects the pelvis and the torso together has a complete range of motion. Um, the part where it's most limited is in its lateral rotation, but if you loosen that up, you can actually extend that even further to the point where the torso and pelvis can touch each other if you want to do a very extreme and very graceful sort of contrapposto pose. But, uh, you know, tightening it up is just simply a matter of turning that screw in the back. There is an entire video devoted to the new hands, so I would really recommend that you watch that video. Simply go to the Kits and Bits page. Um, the, the biggest thing you want to keep in mind is make sure that when you're manipulating it, 
uh, the rotation of the hand that you grab onto the palm of the hand rather than the individual fingers because they are fairly delicate. Um, so you want to use a lot of finesse and care when you're manipulating the actual digits themselves. But it's a very neat design. It has a great opposable thumb so that that thumb can actually touch every single digit in the hand individually. So you can create most poses that you can do with the real hand. The fact that it has all five fingers um, is also really cool. So the um, people have asked about the proportionality of the hand and actually the length of the hand is exactly proportional to the figure. Uh, the only place where some creative liberty was taken is in the actual width of the fingers. So, you know, we don't actually have fingers that fat. And so that made the width of the hand overall a little wider than it would be uh, naturally. But some people do have hands that wide. Uh, they're, they're, they're usually accompanied with uh, being uh, extra if they're very tall people or they have extra long hands. The clips at the pelvis are the same design that's up at the clavicle, but they perform a slightly different function. You can, you know, rotate them out like 45 degrees like I'm doing there so you can create the illusion of a wider pelvis and that way A9 is, is a perfectly androgynous armature. We didn't want to have to have like a female and a male version, so why not just combine the two into one by simply creating that nice subtle little feature there. You can also uh, move them off to the side if you want to reorient the placement of the legs like a, like a high kick or side kick. But the anatomical correct thing to do would be to actually rotate that hip, um, keep the angle consistent, keep the placement of the hip consistent because our hips don't actually change location. Um, something to keep in mind too is when, when if you want to bend the armature forward like a forward stretch, half of that rotation, if not most of it, happens at the hips and then the other half at the back. Uh, a lot of people think that you're supposed to, if you're doing a seated pose, that the rotation happens where the universal peanut joint is, but that is not correct. A lot of that rotation happens at the hips. So you can see uh, the extent to which you can flex the, the armature forward to do these very extreme and flexible postures. And you can see how the hands nicely reach the feet one, one of the, the things that was really important to me when designing A9 is that the proportions match a real human as accurately as possible. We didn't want to go cartoony with it or stylized with it. The twist joint midway up the, the femur allows you to reorient the leg and aim the knee anywhere you want it to be. So you can do cross leg positions, spread out legs. You can get the legs anywhere that a real human could. We got rid of the twist joint midway up the shin because now the foot design is different and the twisting can occur at the ankle. And uh, then and there's also realistic toes with flexion and extension, which is also also new. If you're trying to stand the armature all on its own, it is a self-standing figure. Um, you just have to make sure that the feet are flat. So I usually work my way up from the bottom. I, I grab the feet, make sure they're resting flat, and then try to get the rest of the armature uh, in balance. It takes a little patience, especially if you're working on an uneven surface like I am there. So it's best to work on something hard and rigid that is not going to be wobbling around on you. And a, a tool that I found to be really handy for posing is any sort of putty or clay in this case, I'm using a kneadable eraser because most artists have one of these handy and you just press it firmly onto any surface that you want to work on and then press your armature's foot onto that surface and he sticks on. Um, the weight of the armature is just right so you can pull off uh, tricks like that. You can even have the armature hold itself up with its arms. The arms are strong enough for this. But, um, you know, if they're not, if things get loose over time, look at the video on tightening joints and you can see how you can get your joints to be even better fitted than they are when they're new. Now the arm takes a little bit of extra patience because you want to get the balance just right. Here you can see how nicely the armature holds its weight. 
There is another tool that I'm going to go over next, and that is our articulated crane. And this allows you to do even cooler stuff. Uh, because our armature, as of a couple months ago, started to feature this cool inlaid screw in the back, which is actually compatible with all tripods, all camera tripods. So if you have a camera tripod, you could use that. You don't even have to get our articulated crane. But here you can see how easy it is to use. It has this um, quick release screw that you can pull off and attach to the armature first and then attach it to the crane. Here you want to make sure that when you manipulate the crane, because the crane is such a firm, sturdy piece of hardware, uh, move the neck around rather than grabbing the armature um, and moving it around because you don't want to damage the back of the torso by doing that. But here you can see that once you attach it, it's, it's, it's so easy to manipulate and, and change the armature. You can change the orientation, any angle, any rotation. Um, it's it's just kind of a dream come true in terms of a, a stand for an artist mannequin. Um, now, not only is it good for floating postures, but you can also do standing postures. You just move the neck off to the side and work on whatever surface you want to pose the armature on. And you can get kneeling postures, standing postures. Uh, it's fun for doing seated postures right on the stand itself. The height of the stand is perfectly for the height of an average chair. And so there's just all sorts of cool things you can do with, with the stand. I should mention, and I can't really um, stress this enough, that posing an armature is, is truly an art form in and of itself. Um, character pose in general, I mean, even if you weren't posing an armature and you were drawing a character, or if you were animating a digital character, people are rarely get this right. Uh, to, to get the posture of a character to convey weight, to convey an accurate sense of anatomy. Um, I often see rotations happening in ways that are not natural for the human body to do. And so the, the more you, you grow in your understanding of human locomotion, human anatomy by studying uh, life, by you know going to life drawing sessions, uh, looking at photographs of expert movement, so look at professional martial artists, uh, professional dancers, and uh, study those poses, and and I would, you know, as a as a way to practice, try to match those poses. Look at some videos, and see if you can get your armature to get into some of those. I mean, I know you can because the armature can actually get into any pose humanly possible, but it's good practice, and it's a good way for you to exercise that visual muscle to get gain a better understanding for what makes a person look like a person in terms of posture. So that pretty much concludes this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, leave it in the comments. Uh, you can message me on Facebook or post on our wall, facebook.com forward slash armature nine or send me an email at store at digital double.com. I love to hear from customers or potential customers. If you have ideas, feedback, uh, A9 has been evolving for the last three plus years and it's all thanks to having such an open platform of communication with customers. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.